Hello, and welcome to this recorded virtual library seminar for English 1301. My name is Margaret Handro. I'm the virtual services librarian at the Hobby Memorial Library. This seminar will cover four parts. It will cover how to get help from the library, how to search the library's catalog, how to find material through the databases, and then how to format MLA papers and citations. Let's go ahead and begin. I bring people here to the main CTC website. The URL is www.ctcd.edu. To get to the library, you can do one of two things. You can come here to the Students tab and then click on Library under Student Resources, or you can come to the Academics tab and click on More Resources under Library. This will bring you to the library's main website. To begin, to get help from the library, you can send us an email, you can chat, you can send us a text message, there are video tutorials, there are research guides, and there is the Teaching Learning Center. And of course, you can come in to the library anytime it's open and say, I need help. To begin, we'll come to the Ask a Librarian button here on the top of the library's page. When I click on that, it will open up the form that you can use to fill in and submit your email question. This can be, will the library be open during the spring break? Uh, I need to know what kind of textbooks I will have to have for next semester's classes and how much they'll cost. I'm writing a paper. What are some good databases or keywords that I can use for my search? You would then click Submit, and that will send us an email with your inquiry. Emailed questions are responded to within 24 hours. When the library is open, we try to answer them as quickly as possible, so you may actually have a turnaround time of anywhere from a few minutes to within a couple of hours. But certainly within 24 hours, you should have a response back. Uh, if you don't get a response back in that kind of time, uh, drop us a line or give us a call and say, hi, I sent an email to the library. I haven't gotten a response back. Every so often, uh, the email quarantine software blocks our incoming emails. And so it may be something that we have to request that you resend it. If I click here on library and return to the library's page and then scroll down under library resources, services for students, again, you'll see the link here for Ask a Librarian by email. Right below there is research paper review. This is actually research assistance and paper review service, otherwise referred to as wrappers. This service does several things. If you need help getting started with your paper, the outline, the thesis sentence, uh, maybe how to analyze your resources of your resource, uh, of your material that you found from searching, or maybe you need help with the formatting of your paper, what you can do is you can send us an email uh, to teaching.learning at ctcd.edu. When you send us a request, if you're needing a one-on-one -on -one session, let us know what times are good for you, and we'll work out a mutual beneficial uh, schedule for the two of us. Uh, you can also come into the library and say, I need help. Uh, can I speak with a librarian? And you can do that anytime we're open. When you send us your papers uh, for proofreading, you would send them to us as a file attachment to the same email address, teaching.learning at ctcd.edu. We do ask that the paper be in Microsoft Word format, that it be a final draft. 
and that it not be five minutes before it's due. Uh, if you have a paper that uh, is in rich text or text format, we're able to open it. Uh, if we can't open the paper, we will send back your request to you with a request to send us a document that we are able to open. The turnaround time for proofreading your papers is within 24 hours. Again, when the library is open, this time may be considerably shorter. Returning to the library's web page, when I scroll down to the research study guides, what I can do is see a listing of topics that the library has done a guide for. And I can click on a topic if it's an area that I want to investigate and I don't know that much about it. I can come to one of these pages here. I'll see a little bit about getting started, maybe some information about the um, topic that this page is on, in this case, office technology. You'll find places where you can get help, the Teaching Learning Center, and how to submit a paper for review. You'll also see the library's hours. Uh, if I click on the Researching tab, there are videos here that I can watch to learn how to do an effective search uh, using a database. I can also see a video on being able to tell whether a website that I found on the internet um, is credible or not. And there are guidelines given on the right here that will explain how to use uh, databases and keywords. And you may also see on uh, the left here sources that you can use when you're doing research. When you click on books, you'll see a link for searching the library's catalog. You may also see a range of call numbers for books on that particular topic. There are uh, featured uh, office technology books. These are ebooks. And then on the right here, these are books that are actually in the collection. Ebooks, by the way, can be checked out for the same time period as a regular print book. When I click on databases, you'll see a little video here on what are databases. And it will go through and explain maybe how to search them. And we'll tell you like the selecting and how to use and combine keywords again. It will also provide a listing of databases that you may find useful to you. When you click on journals, these are journals that um, are found in this particular field that you may want to pick up and browse. And these are in our collection as well. Internet resources. These are credible websites that you can click on and get more information. Uh, you may also find some tutorials that will show you how to use some of the products, like this one here. It's a Microsoft Office tutorial that gives you maybe a guided tour on how to use some of the Microsoft Office products. Uh, films and videos. These are videos from uh, the library's Films on Demand. You're able to click on the video um, icon here, and it'll take you right to that video, and you can watch it. Films on Demand is a very interesting database. It will give you not only the film or the video segment, it will also give you a transcript, and you can get the source citation as well. Returning back to the library's uh, main web page, the video tutorial guides, these are short two to three minute to five or six minute uh, videos that you can watch anytime. 
uh, there will be something here maybe for searching the library's catalog if you want a refresher on how to do it or you've completely forgotten and it's like, how do I do this again? Uh, the MLA tutorial will walk you through the process of how to do citing for in-text citations and source citations in MLA style. The databases tutorial is a little bit different from the other ones in that in addition to being a straight through 10 minute video, it also has segments that you can click on on this interactive menu bar. And you can navigate very easily through each of the segments. So you only need to watch maybe the segment that you need the information on. And you'll notice that it disappears when you move your mouse cursor and it will come back. Uh, one of the most frequently asked questions that we get here at the library is logging onto the databases. And this will walk you right through the process. Returning now to the library's website, the library maintains a live chat feature. And what you'll see will be when the library is open, we try to monitor this. So you'll see right, for, uh, right where it says live chat or text chat, you'll see a box that looks like this. And you'll be able to type in your question and get an immediate response back from the library. You can also use your cell phone to send us a text at this telephone number, 254-400-2275. When you do that, the librarian monitoring chat will be able to send you a text message back to your phone. Returning now to the library's website, let's go and visit the library's catalog. The catalog does what we call discovery searching. That means you can find books, ebooks, and articles. For print books, you'll find not only the location and the availability, but also the call number. You can also get the source citation for the book, as well as being able to search other libraries worldwide that might have that particular book. So if you're not in the Colleen Fort Hood area, what you are able to do is you find a print book, you say, I want that print book. You can then go and search, put in where you're located, and then search for other libraries. And it will tell you the libraries worldwide that have that particular book, and it will put the closest one at the top of the list. So I'm going to use as my search topic um, immigration. And as I type in my topic, you'll notice I have some type of heads. For instance, I have immigration in the United States, reform, policy, uh, laws. So I can choose anything on this list as a potential search to do. Let's look at immigration reform and see what we get. You'll notice that I have close to 5,000 results. And if I want to limit those, I can come here to format. And I have my choice of print books, ebooks, articles. I can scroll down here and limit to within the last few years. I can limit by language or by topic. Let me go and limit this first to print books. Now, a little word of note, print books tend to be a little bit on the older side. We're trying to get more recent material into our ebook collections. But you still have um, material that you can find through um, our print. Now, what I have here is a book. It's in both formats. It's both a ebook, it's also available in print. And the way I know it's in print is because it has the availability, the location, and the call number. And then I can come here if I want to look at the view ebook, I can look at it here as well. Let's take a look at this as a 
print book, I'm going to come over here to where it says site. When I click on site, I'll see where it says copy a citation style. And I can select my style. Let me choose MLA 8th edition. This will give me my information that I can then copy and then do a right mouse click and copy it into my document. Now, what I am doing is a bit of uh, harvesting of my resource material as I find it. That way I've got it right away. The other thing I'm going to do is a little bit of pre-formatting because I am building my potential works cited list. So I'm going to highlight all of that and then come here on the Home tab, change my font to Times New Roman, size 12. I want to make sure that this is going to be double spaced. So I'm going to click here on the line spacing. And then because this is potentially going to be an item on my works cited list, I'm going to do uh, the formatting for a hanging indention. And the way to do that is do a right mouse click, come down to paragraph, come to special, and choose hanging. And this will set my indention one half inch uh, from the right uh, from the left margin. Then just click here on OK. Now it doesn't change because this is all on one line. But you'll notice that I have the author. The title of the book is in italics and the publisher and the date. And then what I'll need to do is a little bit of correcting. So I'll just take out that space and then hit the Enter key and I'm ready to receive my next source citation. I'm going to close this because I'm going to want, I want you to see the difference between an ebook and a print book source citation. So I'm going to use the same one and hopefully it will open. I'm going to click on the title of the book. But before that, I want you to see something here. <coughs> this particular ebook is an opposing viewpoints in context um, item. And this is something you have to watch out for. Uh, when you click on view ebook, and we'll try it and see what happens, but occasionally what does happen with this particular database is you'll be taken to the Gale resources login screen. Not all of our databases are good at meshing with our catalog. <coughs> with our catalog. <coughs> what that means is that some databases you can click on the item and be taken right to that particular electronic version. This one here may ask you to log in and what you'll need to do is uh, try and remember the topic of illegal immigration and then open up the Opposing Viewpoints uh, database and then find that particular item there. But like I say, I can come here to where it says Libraries Worldwide and in the search location, I can type in any other location I want. For instance, if I type in Seattle, Washington, and then say search, this particular item is found at the Seattle University, and it's only about two-thirds of a mile from uh, downtown Seattle. And you'll notice that I have a map that I can click on and see exactly where that location is. So this is how easy it will be to find other libraries in just about any area of the country or actually within the world to have access to this. However, like I said, if it's an electronic version, you actually have access to it from anywhere. And uh, in most cases, directly through the catalog or by going through um, the databases like you'd have to here. So let's just see whether or not I can I'm going to click on View eBook. 
Now, because I'm leaving the catalog to go into the databases, the first time I do that, I'm brought to the online database login screen. The username and password are very similar to what you use for Blackboard. Uh, your username is going to be the lowercase c, the first seven digits of your CTC ID number. Your password will be your first and last initials in capital letters, followed by your six-digit birth date. Uh, you just enter that here, and then click on Login. And yes, this is uh, Opposing Viewpoints is a Gale publication, so it's likely you may see something like this. And so what you'll need to do is actually go to Opposing Viewpoints to view that particular ebook. So let's go back to our search results. And let me choose to go to ebooks. And sometimes you'll also see a listing of databases that you can look at. And we actually have more than just these two that we're able to look at. So what I can do is we have something like this, Right to Dream, Immigration Reform and Nature's Future. I can click on the title of the book. This is coming from eBook Central. Uh, when I click on View Description, I can actually get an idea of what's in the table of contents. The subjects are right here. And these are all hot links. Anything in blue is a hot link. And if I click on it, I can then execute um, a search on that particular subject. If I come down a little bit further, I can see a summary. And then I can also see other libraries that have it. And I'm still searching Seattle. So if I type in Colleen and Texas, this tells me that we have it. And it also, the next library that might have it would be the Texas State Library at San Marcos. But we're going to be looking at this as an ebook. So I'm going to come here and click on View Ebook. This will bring me to the databases. Now, because I logged in already, I don't have to log in again. I can read the book online. I can download the book, and downloading the book is the electronic way of checking the book out. So you're able to have it for 21 days. On the 22nd day, it will disappear completely from your computer. You can download chapters, you can copy pages, or you can get a selection of pages uh, using any of these features here. These will tell you the limits that you can have uh, per day. If I scroll down, I have a nice um, description of what's in the book. And then I have the table of contents. And then what I can do is I can click anywhere in the table of contents. And it will take me to the first page of that section. Now, the nice thing about this database is it gives me the um, table of contents here. I can expand areas to see uh, what there is in that area, and I can click on that directly. If I want to look at, um, say, the dreamers, I can type in my keyword of dreamers, and then I can click on the search. This tells me that there are 33 results within the book for my keyword dreamers. When I scroll down, I can see which chapters have information, and I can see how much information. The longer the line, the more information. When I click on the little arrow, it will expand and then take me right to that particular uh, first page. These are all hot links. And you'll notice it will tell me how many times it found the keyword dreamers on that page. So I can click on a particular one. And this looks like it might be a case study where you meet two dreamers. 
So what I can do here, and you'll notice I have my keywords are um, highlighted in lavender. And so if this is a page or a section that I'm wanting, I can actually come up here to the PDF chapter download and click on it and say I want the current chapter. I can change the citation style to MLA and then click on continue. The other thing I can do is I can come here to the printer icon. Now the printer icon is not going to send it to a physical printing uh, machine. Uh, what it will do is it prints to an Adobe Acrobat PDF file. When I click on that, I can print the current page, a range of pages, or I can get the current chapter. And it will give me the citation style for MLA. If I say I want maybe from uh, page 75 to maybe 76, I can do that and click continue. And I can open my PDF. and change the magnification so that it's a little easier to read. And apparently I was on the wrong page, but I have basically uh, the page I wanted. And so what I can do is I can take this and save it to my computer. Now down here at the bottom, in very small print, you'll see the source citation. And you're actually able to take that and copy it and paste it into your paper. Now watch what happens when I come down here to the paste options. Uh, this first one is keep source formatting. When I move the f cursor to the right, to the merge formatting, it changes my font so that it merges my Times New Roman size 12 double spaced hanging indention. It formats that for me. And then all I have to do is a little bit of correcting. I can tab that in so it's in alignment. I can come here and highlight the title of the book. I have a little floating toolbar for my font, and I'll just change that to italicize the title of the book. And then I'll come over here to the um, name of the database, and I will highlight that and italicize that as well. And what I have now are two sources that I've harvested. One is a print book, and one is an ebook. I come back here. The other thing I can do here is let's say I like this paragraph up here. It's got a nice bit of information in it, so I don't need the whole page. I can come here to the copy function, and basically I can highlight what I want right here, and then I can use the copy function either on this floating toolbar or up here on the main toolbar and it will open up a little box like this. So I can actually come here and put in my quote marks, hit the enter key, and then I want to um, make sure that I capture my page number. This is page 76, so I'm gonna type a little note here of page 76. What I am doing is I'm capturing uh, my quote and the page number and creating an electronic version of a note card. And I'll have right below it my source citation. I'm going to take out this created from because I don't need that. But what I can do then is I can come here and highlight all of that and then do a control C to copy, bring up my document, and then I'm going to put this right here and then I'm just going to paste that right in. I'm not going to worry about the formatting just yet. I'm going to, to take care of this later on. 
and then I can say I'm done. And what that does is it then goes and uh, gives me my information. And I highly recommend not using a dash or a line to separate uh, your items, but you might just use like the number eight. And that way it is easy to erase and you don't have to worry about a pesky line that you can't get rid of uh, later on. So basically this eight acts as a divider between maybe one note card and maybe another one that I might have uh, from the same book or from a different book. Okay, I'm going to return now to the library's um, search results. We're going to see about finding an article. I'm going to take off my filter of ebook and I'm going to come down here to where it says article. And then I want to make sure that the articles that I find have the full text of the article with it. So I'm going to come here and click on full text. And that reduced it down by half. And again, what I can do is I can uh, take a look at the kind of items that I'm finding. And I can click on a title. These are all fairly old, so let's go and limit this to the last five years. And uh, what I'm getting here is something from 2015. This is coming from Issues in Science and Technology, but I'm seeing something that's more appropriate here, Congressional Digest. So I'm going to go and click on View Full Text. And this will take me right to the article. I have my article title. And by the way, pay attention to the subject terms that appear here or in the abstract, because it may give you um, other ideas for keywords that you can use. I'm going to come here to the PDF full text. And this will give me the article as it appeared in print. And so the nice thing about this is it will give me the page number and MLA citations, the in-text citations, you need to have the page number if you have it. So what I can do is this one looks very promising and I can come here and I can email the article to myself by clicking on the email icon that looks like a little envelope. I'll come here to where it says email to and put in my email address and I'm going to go and put in a subject so that I know what I'm getting. And I'm going to come then over here to where it says citation format. I'm going to click on the little down arrow and click on MLA. This is going to send me the source citation in MLA format with the article. And then I'm going to click Send. And then I'll click on Continue. Let me close this. And what I'm going to do is I've got my email up already. That ding tells me that the article has arrived. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. There's my article uh, as an attached file. And then right here where it says Works Cited, I have the source citation. I can then take that and copy it and then paste it into my growing works cited list. And again, I'm going to merge my formatting. Now, uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it uh, won't do everything quite right. So I'm just going to highlight it, come back here to paragraph and tell it hanging and say OK. Now, the works cited list needs to be in alphabetical order by either the name of the author or by the title. So I'm going to move this up here to put it in order. So I have now found a print book, an ebook, and a journal article 
on my topic. And this is just from the catalog. So let me minimize this and minimize this. Oops. And come back to the library. OK. And then what I can do now is I can go into uh, the library's databases. Now, the library subscribes to over 130 databases, and I understand that we've added a bunch more. So when you're searching for your topic, what we've done is we've created a listing of subject uh, headings. And what you do is find the subject category that closely matches what you're looking for. You could use, in this case, like law and government. You might also use the criminal justice. Uh, databases. I'm going to start first with law and government. When I click on law and government, it opens up a short list of databases that are related to either law and or government. And you'll notice I've got academic search complete. I have a specific database called military and government. And I've got something here called opposing viewpoints. So what I'm going to do is click on opposing viewpoints. And opposing viewpoints, as the name suggests, is it presents different sides to multiple issues. And you'll have some featured issues like US borders, school funding, uh, diversity, and maybe uh, immigration. You may find that these change every day. What you can do, though, is you can come up here and type in immigration. And what you'll see are uh, some topics here. You'll notice that we have some of these are in bold, especially this one here, children of undocumented immigrants. I'm going to click on that because that's close to where I'm looking for, because uh, those are the dreamers. And this is a topic page. When you see something that is on that list and it's bold-faced, it's a topic page. And it will give you information, um, an article, sort of a featured article that you can read. Uh, more information on, and it discusses uh, the issues, the family separations. And what's nice is it gives you the source citation right here. So what I can do is I can either copy this um, to my file, or I can actually come up here and tell it to save to a folder. And when I do that, it's a little check mark to it. And then I can come back to my topics page. You'll see on the right here, it says on this page. It has featured viewpoints, academic journals, viewpoints, primary sources, references, images, videos. I have all of these resource materials just from this uh, one topic page. As I scroll down, I can um, click on Featured Viewpoints, and I can see what it is that it's talking about. And again, I'll have the source citation here. If this is something I want, I can then tell it to save my folder. Now, a little word of note. Every so often, the Opposing Viewpoints database, uh, you can add things to your folder. And uh, sometimes the folder will recognize that it will tell you, yes, there are items in it. But when you open the folder, there may not be anything in there. And it's a problem that is at the opposing viewpoint side of the um, uh, software. But what I can do is when I've found articles, I can come here to these three lines to where it says more, and it will tell me uh, where my, uh, how many items I have in my folder. I can click on that, and I've got, today it's working. I have two items in my folder, and I have citation tools that I can tell it what citation font I want. And then I can take this, and I can uh, copy that. And I can paste both of those 
directly into my document. and correct the formatting. Just like that. And then I can take these and put them in order. Like There we go. And just like that, I have my work cited. And I've only been in the catalog and one of the databases. Uh, we do, ex uh, now the other thing you can do is you can send these as emails. And you would put in your email address. And you'll have the subject heading here. What you can do is you can actually take that out and say, um, maybe dreamers. And if you want to put in your source citations again, you can actually just pop them into the message box and tell it to send. And then, There are my articles, and what I have, again, are uh, the source citations, and then I have the article here, and I have the source down here as well. So it's a way of getting uh, those items so that I have it, uh, because not always will you find um, the source citation down at the bottom. So this gives you a way of doing that. Come back here, close this, and come back to my databases. I can also come here to um, say Academic Search Complete. Academic Search Complete is the oldest of all the databases. It's also an EBSCO database, which means that I can come here to where it says Choose Databases, and I can select other databases to search um, simultaneously. So I can pick up maybe the legal, I can pick up the uh, military and government, um, I can pick up the, uh, let's say, the news wires or the newspapers or other you know, news items, I can say OK. The benefit of doing that is that I can then search all of these databases that I've chosen simultaneously. I don't have to do one search in one database and then do it again and again and again. This is one and done. So what I want to do now is I want to make sure that I'm getting the full text of my article. So I want that little box there checked. If your professor says you can only use scholarly or peer-reviewed journals, uh, there's a limiter for that that you can set automatically. And then you can also come here, because this is such a um, changing, rapidly changing topic, you can actually put in a, a publication date. Uh, so what we can do is maybe say the last two years. So I've got from 2016 to 2019. And then I can come up here and type in uh, keywords like immigration reform. Um, or I can say like undocumented immigrants, students, workers, children. Uh, so I have a variety of ways I can look at my topic. And so what I needed to do is look at undocumented students. There are 400 items that have been found. And um, I can look at this to see whether or not this is what I'm looking for. I can also come here and say, no, maybe I want to try Dreamers. 
Dreamers, and you'll see I've got Dreamers or DACA. I've got Dreamers and Deportation and their families. So I can choose on the fly how I want to do my searching. So I'm going to choose Dreamers or DACA. And there are, within just the last three years, there are 7,600 articles on that particular topic. I can limit this further by either uh, changing my date range. And I can also choose by source type. So if I want to look at only the academic journals, I've got 71 articles there. And what I have now are articles. I can click on the article title. And I've got subject terms. Anything in blue is a hot link. And then I have my abstract. And my keywords are bold-faced. And then I have a PDF article that I can look at. And this, again, gives me the article the way it appeared in print. Now, because I'm in the databases proper, I can actually add this to a folder. And I can then look at it later on. I can come back up here to where it says source types. And the easiest way of choosing a different source type is to click here where it says show more. And so I can unclick uh, the journal articles. And there's something here called trade publications. Uh, trade publications are magazines that are written by the industry for the industry. So um, what I can do is see what there is here. Texas is on the front line of DACA immigration reform debate. This is from Engineering News Record. When I click on that, I can get a better idea of what it's dealing with. It's not a very big article. Uh, it's only about a page in length. By the way, pay attention to this information here. Uh, this is the size of the file. If it's 10 megabytes or bigger, it won't email. Uh, you'll have to save the document to your hard drive. The uh, source citation will email, but the article may not. So just keep an eye to that size. Uh, but when I click on the article, this looks like it has a nice photograph. And um, this may, again, be something that I want to um, look at. And the reason it's in the engineering uh, record is because it's dealing with the construction force. And so I can add that one to my uh, list. You'll notice, too, that my icon here is yellow instead of blue. This tells me it's been added. Let me go and choose one more. I come to um, maybe magazines. And what I have here, I have a variety of them. Now, this particular one is in HTML format. So when I click on the article title to get an idea of what HTML looks like, is that it'll look like this. There are no pages. There are no pictures. Uh, it's the full text of the article. And uh, so basically, you can use it. And MLA, when you're doing your end text citations, will say, if you don't have the page number, don't worry about it. You just supply either the title or the author of the article. So I'm going to have this one added to my folder as well. When I think I have enough items in my folder, what I can do then, and by the way, you have access to web news, to news wires. Uh, that you can search as well. And some of those will be within the database. Others will actually take you out of the database to an internet website. But when I think I have enough items, I can come here to the folder view or up here on the bar where it says folder and click on that. And this will let me see the articles that I've put into my folder. 
I'm going to select all. I can pick and choose which ones I want. And then I can email it to myself. And again, I just put in my email address. And then I'm going to go and put in my subject heading. And I'm going to put in uh, Dreamers. And DACA. Now I'll come over here to my citation format, MLA, and tell it to send. And then continue. And then you'll notice I have my three articles are sent separately. Now you'll notice that two of these, the two at the top, have the little paper clip to indicate that there's an attached file. And that this one here does not. Now this particular one is an important one because in addition to giving you the HTML articles, and all HTML articles will be in one batch, but it also gives me a batch for the work cited. So I can take all of this and just copy that and paste it directly into my paper. And then all I have to do is take out the parts that I don't need, take out the extra line, and then do some correcting, for instance. Unbold that, center it. This is upper and lower case. So I can use the uh, source, the uh, font tool here to change my case to capitalize each word. DACA is an acronym, so I'll leave that one alone. Now what I have to do is take, uh, I'm going to take these two, I'm going to cut them, and then I'm going to come down here and paste them in, and that puts them in alphabetical order. So my work cited is complete. Now, like I say, this is a potential work cited, so if there are sources that I don't use, I can just remove it like that. So anything that's in my works cited list is going to be something that I'll have used in my paper. Now let's come up here to the top of my paper here. Let's put this down a bit. Now what you're going to be doing with MLA is you're going to format uh, the header and then your information. So we're going to put the header in first. I'm going to come up here on the Microsoft Word ribbon and click on insert and then come over here to header. I'm going to choose the first one and then tab over to the right. You can also probably use the right alignment feature that's on the home uh, tab. And I'm going to type in, uh, this would be where you'd put in your last name, and then hit the space bar. Don't use the page number because if you do, it wipes out whatever you've typed here. Instead, come to quick parts, come down to field, and then choose page, and then your page format, and say OK. That will put your page number right after your last name. Then highlight it. My little floating toolbar has come up. So I can change this to Times New Roman size 12. And that will take care of my header. Then I can click on the close header box. Now I'm ready to start typing. I want to make sure that my paper is in Times New Roman, size 12, and that it's double spaced. That's everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my font box, Times New Roman, size 12, come over to my line spice, spacing, choose double, and then I'm going to type in my information. So this would be where you put your name, your professor's name, The course, this is English 
1301, and then you'll put in the date. And the date is always in day, month, year format. So, for instance, today might be 8 February 2019. I'll hit the Enter key once, center it. This will be where I put the title of the paper. Then I'll hit the Enter key, go back to left alignment. Now I'm ready to start typing. Now, MLA says that the first line of every new paragraph needs to be indented one half inch. And so what I'll do is something very similar to what I did with the hanging indention. I'll come here and do a right mouse click, come to paragraph, and under special, I'll choose first line. And you'll see that it indents one half inch. And I'll click on OK, and you'll notice my typing cursor is actually moved over one half inch. So what I can do now is I can begin typing. And all I have to do is remember not to hit the Enter key, because the computer will automatically do the carriage return line feed for me. When I hit the Enter key, it will start a new line and indent it for me. And that's how you set up an MLA style paper. Now, let's talk about in-text citations. I have my quote here from earlier. And I've got my source material here, too. What I can do is if I want to have all of this as a direct quote, I'll need to format it as a long quote. And that means that this has to be uh, as a block format. And then I'll have my in-text citation. Most of the time, though, you're not going to use all of this information. What you really want to do is either paraphrase it or summarize it. With something this big, a summary would do very nicely. So what I can do is I can take a look at this, and uh, it looks like uh, Schwab and Gerhardt are talking about um, or discussing college student populations uh, having reached a, an all high. So what I can do is I can put in here, I want to make sure that my font is correct. And so what I could do is go Now, what I have here with this sentence is a summary of some of the information from this paragraph that I copied. Now, because I used their names in the body of the sentence, this is called the signal phrase. I do not need to use them in here in the parenthetical in-text citations. Now, if I were to do uh, the same sentence or a slight variation on that, I could say um,
And so what I have is a variation on the same sentence based on this information here. And what I have instead is I've got the author's names in the parenthetical in-text citation followed by the page number. Now if I have a document that does not have pages, and some of the HTML articles will not have that, what you would provide would be just the author's name. If you have an article that does not have a, uh, an author or a book without an author, you would use either the article title or the book title in your in-text citations. That's how you set up your in-text citations to uh, match MLA standards. Now, chances are you're going to say, I'm not going to remember this five years from now or even five minutes. Where can I go and get this so that I can access that information anytime I want to? What you do is you come back to the library's homepage and under library resources, you'll find citation resources. And this will bring you to the Purdue Online Writing Lab or the OWL. When you click on the OWL and then scroll down to MLA style, choose the formatting and style guide. This will show you how to do basic formatting, how to do in-text citations, works cited, and it will give you a sample paper so that you can see what a final paper will look like. When you click on the media file, MLA sample paper, this gives you all of your identification information, your header, the title of your paper. The blue boxes give you the instructions. The green boxes explain why. And then if I come to page nine, you'll see how the works cited should look. Uh, and you'll notice that these are all in hanging indented, that the uh, items that have just a title are in alphabetical order in the same list. Now, one of the things I'll warn you about is occasionally somebody will have a source like this, but they've chosen to use this information for their in-text citation. If you do that, you're going to get a zero. What you want to remember is that whatever is at the far left margin here in your work cited, that is where the information is going to come that will tell you how to do your in-text citations. So for instance, in this case, I'll just use like Lorraine. When I have a title, MLA says uh, you really only need maybe the first word or two of the title. If it's short, yeah, like this one, you could probably do all three words. Uh, this one, you might be able to get away with like Morel Land Grant. But if you have um, very lengthy titles, all you really need will be the first word or two for the parenthetical in-text citations. Now, if you use the article title or the book title in the body of the sentence, you would use the primary or uh, that first part of the title that comes before the colon. So that would be how you would do it. And the Purdue OWL will show you what you need to know for handling those types of um, sources. Now, the library has produced two style guides, and there is one here specifically for MLA that you can use. Uh, there's an MLA style guide here that will give you the general formatting guidelines, how to do basic in-text citation formats, and the most commonly used uh, formats for works cited. And so you'll see basically the formula to follow, and then a live version of that particular item. And that's um, what we have for you. So to recapitulate, what would have been covered here in this hour is to get help. You can come into the library. You can send us an email. You can text us. You can chat with us. There are the research study guides. There are the video tutorials. There's the Teaching Learning Center that you can use to set up a one-on-one -on -one mentoring session with a librarian. 
Uh, the catalog will give you access to books, ebooks, and articles. And you're also able to get with print books the source citation, uh, the location, the call number, and any other libraries worldwide that has that particular print book. The databases will give you, uh, in addition to the articles and ebooks, there are also streaming videos. And we do recommend taking a look and seeing if your topic has a video or video segment through our Films on Demand database. The databases, in addition to giving you all this, will give you the source citation that you can then use. And then to get help with your paper, you have access to the uh, research paper review service. Uh, you have uh, the Teaching Learning Center. There are the video guides, the research guides. There's a little tab on most of them that will say how to cite. But then there are some specifically that are for that particular uh, citation format. Uh, you can um, send us your papers for proofreading. Turnaround time is within 24 hours. Following this seminar, when it ends, there will be a white title page that will basically have the name of the seminar and uh, maybe the date or the runtime. What you want to do is to close that page. What should follow immediately upon your closing that page will be the library's post-seminar survey. Now this is important because the uh, survey score adds, uh, gives us the verification that we need to give to your professor that you watched the entire seminar. Uh, the survey also does two other things. It gives us feedback on how well the information was imparted to you, and it gives you feedback on how well you understood the information. So I will bid you Goodbye, and remember, you do need to take the seminar survey, and what you do is close the white page that will follow immediately after the seminar finishes playing. And with that, I look forward to seeing your papers in the near future.